If you search on eBay for 433MHZ, you'll find devices like this. Uh, so this is a, a 433 MHz receiver, and this is a 433 MHz transmitter. And they cost me about £1.70, so they're very cheap. They come in different varieties, and these are supposed to be quite cheap and not necessarily bit, very good quality, but um, they seem to work fine um, on my Raspberry Pi for receiving data. So many things transmit and receive on 433 MHz. So for example, um, these car keys, they transmit and receive them. I'll show how to receive the data coming from those car keys uh, a bit later. Uh, also, this is a, a Maplin project from about 20 years ago, and that transmits on 433 MHz. And there are other devices in my house as well, which seem to transmit on 433 MHz. Uh, and I'll show you data being received from those as well. So in the video, what I'll do is I'll go over the circuit uh, used to connect a Raspberry Pi to, to this. And I'll go through um, actually running a program in Python, which receives the data from these MIDI keys, uh, and also from this, and also from whatever tra uh, is transmitting on the same frequency within my, I think it's within my house. It might be a neighboring house. Uh, and then at the end, I'll go through the software and I'll explain how the software works as well. So this is the Raspberry Pi I'm going to use uh, to demonstrate this receiving circuit. So I'm not going to use the transmitting circuit. This is just going to be receiving data in this video. Uh, it connects to a couple of pins on the Raspberry Pi. So that's just a one GPO uh, pin and the ground uh, pin. Um, I'm running it from a PP3 battery. Uh, this circuit runs off of five volts and you could actually run it off of the five volts coming from the GPO on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, but because I'm probably going to use this on the my controller project a bit later. Uh, I've just decided just to run it from a PP3 battery. It only takes a few milli milliamps of um, current, so actually it doesn't take much uh, at all. Um, and I've just got this uh, little circuit here because this runs on five volts and the GPO pins are 3.3 volts. Uh, I'm just using a trans transistor just to pull it down the ground. So the Python program will pull, pull the pin up to 3.3 volts and then the transistor in here will just pull it down to ground, the signal down to ground. But I'll go through the circuit uh, also a bit later in this video. So I've got the two key fobs I'm going to test here. Uh, and the script is on my Raspberry Pi. I'll check this into GitHub. And if I run the script, and the first time it always come up um, with bad data for the first record, um, just because it's um, going from the beginning. Um, but if I press the button on, my, on on this key fob and you see the LED light and you see the hex data here, so it breaks it down to several different data types. It logs the date, uh, data size, and it automatically um, detects the baud rate by uh, finding the, the shortest period. And it displays the binary data, then the hex data, then byte data. It displays in different these different types so that you can hopefully work out what the data is all about. In fact, actually there's another log entry down here. This is the thing which I receive information from. It always seems to be on 56 seconds past the minute. So it transmits every minute. It's probably from some device in my house. Uh, and it always starts 2A, A, 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 A. Uh, but if I press the button on this key fob again, this one always starts 4E92492777. I'll press it again. There it is again, 4E294977. And, it, and the, of course the second button works as well. Got a bit of bad data now. It's possible I may have pressed that at the same time it received some other data. So, because if it clashed data, then it's going to come up with some weird stuff. So I'll press the second button again. There it is, 4294927. But I've also got my mini keys here, which is just a standard to a car, mini car. So if I press the button on there, and it transmits. Uh, and this one starts with 55555555. But you see this is the data that's coming back from the, from the key fob. So if I press it again, and it starts off again, 5555. But the rest of this data, uh, it will be different. So... Even though you can receive this data on most cars, it should be or on all cars. It should be different data you get back each time because they should use a thing called a one time pad or something like that, where it's got a set of codes in the key 
and it only transmits uh, a, any particular code once. Let me just press that button again. Okay, so if I you know, if I scroll up a bit there, I should hold the data here. Um, so it only, should only receive uh, the same code once, uh, and then never, not use that code again, uh, which is about which is by the security of the car, it, so that you, it, so no one can record like information like this and then just open the car by playing back the same inf information because the car will know that that code's already been used. So if I opened my car door and someone captured that. Uh, and then they played it back. Well, because it's already I've already used that code to open the door. The mini should know recognize that that's already been used and and ignore anyone that plays that back. Um, and this is this is only on standard uh, frequency anyway. This is like the three hundred forty four megahertz, which is a standard frequency. As you've seen, it, it receives something in my house which transmits on the same frequency. So so there's no it's not like it's a, a secure frequency or anything like that. I'm sure that. Um, they maybe maybe they encrypt the data uh, as well, um, but certainly it should only be ever uh, one code is used and then never used again. So this is the circuit I'm using. Uh, at the top, I've got a five volt power supply, um, but you don't need a five volt power supply with a Raspberry Pi. You can just drive it directly from the five volts. But I've got this just in case I want to drive it from something like a, a microcontroller. Uh, so I might use that later. And then at the bottom of the circuit. So the transmitter or the receiver, sorry, that um that I've got, it's got a four pin connector and it's got a five volt input there, and ground there, and then both of these in the pins are the data. So you only need to take the data from one. I take it through a one k resistor. Then I've got a potentiometer where I can pull the signal closer to the ground, just to eliminate any noise or or try and reduce the amount amount of noise that comes from the um. The receiver, although I don't think there's that much noise there, but I take it through a um, a transistor, so it takes it away. So so I've not got the five volts coming out of there and going to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the the, the uh, transistor just means that it goes between ground and whatever the pull-up value of the GPIO pin on the Raspberry Pi is. Um, so yeah, the transistor just just pulls the signal to ground, and that's the simple circuit that I'm using. So I just. Take a quick look through the source code. Um, at the top, I've got some, some constants. So I define the RX pin that I'm using for the on the GPIO. I've got the TX pin there as well. Maybe in the future, I might try the transmitter, but I haven't got any transmit code in there right now. Also, I've got this um, configuration where I can invert the bits because I'm going through a tra an NPN transistor. When I'm receiving the bits, the NPN transistor is going to invert the input. So I've got a configuration option in here where I can invert the the, the bits that were received. Um, I'm defining how what a period which I consider to be end of transmission. So when it's receiving some data, if there's a gap of one second that I've just defined here, then it will consider that data's uh, complete and it will then display that on the display. Also, a period where I consider the data is valid. Maybe it's invalid. Maybe it's noise, or maybe uh, two communications have clashed. And if there is a, a a period of of this, which is a very small period, was that milliseconds, micro, so about twenty microseconds. Uh, if there's uh, one of the clock pulses is about twenty microseconds or less, then it will consider that bad data and it will reject it. Uh, when I receive the data, I receive it into like um, into like a data table, and these are the fields I've got within the data table. I set up the GPO, so it's very simple. I've only got one pin that I'm re using to re receive. Now I was using interrupts, uh, or I tried using interrupts to receive the data, uh, but that wasn't very successful. Now that might be because the interrupts in Python aren't real time. Maybe they can get delayed, or there was something that was corrupt in the data. It wasn't. I wasn't getting good good data, so I, I've gone away from the interrupt um, uh, system and I'm gone to polling, just data polling for this program. So I just set up my data initial values there, just to so that it runs in the first loop. And I have an infinite loop, so I just keep going around and around receiving data. What I do is I check the time that I received the last bit. Uh, to the time that I've 
uh, the, the, this iteration of the loop is. And if it's less than the end period, then I consider I'm still receiving data. Once it goes over the end period, then I consider that's the end of the data and I'll display it. So in this first condition, I'm receiving data. Uh, or if the data length is zero, so if I've processed some data, and although the period could have gone over the, the, the end period, because the data's uh, zero, I'm, I'm waiting for, for new data, basically. And it will go into this first uh, condition on the if statement. And it just gets level of the pin. If the pin level has changed, uh, then it appends the data to my set of data, which I'm receiving. And in there, I've got like a sequence count. So I'm just counting the sequence uh, of the data bits. They're not bits, they're levels actually at this, at this stage. Data levels being received. Uh, and on the receive pin, I record the, the data level which has been received and how long it was received for. So it was high for so many fractions of a second, low for so many fractions of a second, high for so many fractions of a second. Because I'm recording the data level changes, there could be many bits in the low period. So it goes low and maybe it stays low for X amount of time. But within that amount of time, there could have been one bit, or it could have been five bits, but it's one level change. So here we're recording data level changes. Later, we're gonna to have to convert that into bits and that will depend on the bit rate. Uh, so I reset the bit period. So the next time around, I can, I can calculate how long it was between receiving this level, which maybe it was a low, and so when it receives a high, I know the difference between the end of this period to the start of the next period. Uh, I just increase the sequence number, which I'm just rec recording in my data. And I'm saying, okay, this level that I've just that I've just added to my data was at a certain level. So next time round, I'll be looking for the, the opposite level. So when it's not the last level. Uh, so that's the simple receiving and I, I've made a very tight loop so I've made tried to make this this piece of code very small uh, so that it can run very fast um, I'm running on sort of a second generation Raspberry Pi I think you know the first generations were slower I don't know, I've not tried it on that might, may not run very well or might do uh, the later versions it might run even better I don't know uh, but the only other condition is this condition so We've received the data, and now it's a matter. Of, and it, and there's been a lapsed period of one second, so it thinks it's oh okay, that's the end of the data. Uh, and what I do is display the date and time it was received. So you could redirect this, the output of this Python script, into a file and just log everything for a day, and then look back over the day and see what's been received. Uh, I just calculate the what data size is once here, because I might use it several times. I think I only use it actually use it a couple of times, but. It's worth doing it there. I just write that what the data size is into the log. Okay, so now I I want to try and work out for myself what the the data rate is. And with these transmissions, I found that the the low low period data rate can be different to the high period data rate. So they might have different periods. So you have to record the both the low and the highest. All I do is go through the data which I've received. I find the shortest period. So where the data period is less than the period that I'm um, that I'm currently looking for, which which I start off with being like a second. So then I, I look for a period lower than a second. Then as I go through the data, I look for a period lower than the last lowest period that I found. So I find that in the data, the lowest period for the high level and the lowest period for the low level, I consider that my data rate, but I don't look for all the data. So I skip the first couple of um, levels of data and I skip the last couple of levels of data just in case maybe they're stop bits, start bits, bit noise or something so I just try and ignore the first few bits and the last few bits uh, but from that I consider that to be my data rate and that seems to seems to be working fine uh, and I just display what the data rate is for the high and low here put it into the log and then what I do is I check to see if uh, and we can add conditions to this later as well, but I've picked conditions here which would would consider be bad data and it's not worth displaying. Uh, so if while I'm looking for my data period, I haven't found one, so it's still one second on either high or low, I consider, okay, well, it's got to be bad data. Maybe it's noise or, or something. Um, 
or if the load period is less than the the smallest amount of time I consider, which would would be noise, you know, or the high high period is the smallest amount of data. Either that, or it's something transmitted on a, a data rate which I can't the, is too fast for this Python program to to process, which is always possible. Uh, but if data looks good, then I display it in a few few ways. So I display it in binary data. Now the binary data not only displays it, but it converts it into into bytes. So in here you'll see, um, so it it tests for whether it's high level or low level, and it it converts the the level for the period. So so see where I'm divided in here, the period of the data divided by the min low level period, that will give me the number of bits it was low for. So now I'm I'm converting the levels into bits, uh, and I'm putting it into um, out here a data byte. So I'm, I'm shifting the the bits across and adding a zero, or down here I'm adding a one for a high level. I'm just uh, adding that into the, into a data byte. So I'm doing it as eight bits into the data byte. So I'm converting the bits into bytes, uh, but also displaying here uh, the binary value. And then because the data is now in bytes, I can then display it as hex data. So I can iterate through my byte data which I've accumulated in for each byte and then display it in a particular format. In, in this particular case it's hex uh, and then I go and display it in uh, decimal and I just try and display it as word values just in case they're sending word values just to try and decode uh, what the actual data is being sent and also ASCII because who knows maybe someone's sending an ASCII message and that's that's all of the code so it's very simple code uh, not much to it at all. I'm sure it could be made better, but um, but it seems to work fine.